Good evening, everyone. It's baseball time in Texas as we're about to get underway, as we say. I've got a lot of fans here as I'm walking in. They see me and they're going, it's baseball time in Texas. Yes, sir. <laughs> so good evening, everyone. I'm Michael Francis alongside the one and only Mr. Jonathan Kaspar. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Ready for some great baseball. A beautiful evening this afternoon or this evening uh, new turf field for the hayes hawks yes and second just time like we, layman yeah that's the second time we've been able to enjoy a beautiful complex restructured rebuilt redone and yeah I mean, it looks absolutely beautiful they also have out in the center field can't barely tell it's there but the hayes logo is in center field just like the layman's lobos logo was in center field as well and uh didn't look like they changed much in route of the field although power alley to dead center is a good ways out there with a tall fence we've got 315 to the corners 380 to dead center and right now we have the coaches meeting at home plate although waiting for coach crimping uh, as he is probably just setting up a few last things as the boys have done their warm-ups and we're getting ready now. We do have a an extra special event going this evening. It is a recognition tonight for all the veterans out there as well as first responders, and we do have the Hayes Hawks color guard that will be presenting flags tonight, their colors. Uh, there will be a presentation to them before the national anthem goes. And so that's a great, great uh, addition that we will have to the broadcast. So we've got everything set up. They should be, I believe, right behind home plate. So view should be there tonight for all of those that are first responders, that are veterans. Hats off to you. Thank you for your service on both sides. We really appreciate everything you do for our country and to allow us to be able to recognize that flag that is flying here at Hayes Hawks Field in left center uh, right next to the scoreboard. And again, we do have meeting of the coaches. They are going over lineups, exchanging lineups getting all the rules before the game goes. Uh, real quick, while I have the opportunity and I'm thinking about it, I want to give a quick shout-out to Caden Kaspar. My boy had his 19th birthday yesterday, so we were able to go out and celebrate him and have a little surf and turf there in Cedar Park. Unbelievable seafood restaurant so a uh, great great place to go eat if you find yourself out there and uh, happy birthday my boy we love you happy birthday mr caden caspar and right now just going over our last few things we've had a few freeze ups lately of our feed on the video the scoreboard still stays up to date so we don't have any issues there so you know we're trying to work out that little kink and I believe we've got a few extra little uh, pieces in route so that we can hope eliminate that in the future and, and hopefully eliminate that tonight. Uh, we did a little change in plans. We hooked up our video link a little bit later. Hopefully it does not get overheated 
uh, which we believe is the root cause behind why that is happening as it's happening late in the game. It did happen on Tuesday night, or actually Wednesday night's game. Uh, we did not play on Tuesday night because of the rain delay. Uh, not having the turf field <laughs> like we are seeing here at Hayes. But that did allow us to have a Wednesday night game, and we did see a great outing, great pitcher's duel early in that game that ended up resulting in a late offensive flurry from the Rouse Raiders as they put up six runs late and went went on to win the game. And we'll see what happens tonight as we are facing a different pitcher. The scouting report on him is he's a, a... a lot of breaking pitches. A lot of breaking pitches relies on that uh, exclusively. Go ahead, Mike. Hayes comes into tonight, 19 and 6 overall. They're 6 and 3 in district play. They're coached by James Howard. He's in his ninth season with 135 wins. He's assisted by Steve Riojas, Elijah Gonzalez, and Raul Lopez. Their 2023 record is 16, 15, and 1. They were 9 and 5 in district. And that four way tie for district champions in District 25 5A. Always a tough out in District 25 5A. And they finished yes, as by district finalists. I want to say they, I'm not sure who they played in by district. It may have been Alamo Heights, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, if anybody knows, please correct me. I'll, let us know. Rouse comes in 25 and 1, 7 and 2 in district play. They're coached by Chad Crimpine. He's in his 23rd year with 501 wins. He's assisted by Manny Perez, Dan LaPaglia, and Will Noble. The 2023 record was 30, 12 and 1, with 9 and 5 as a regional finalist. They have seven returning starters, and the Hayes Hawks have eight returning starters. So, have a treat on tap tonight. As you mentioned, Jonathan, it's armed services recognition, first responders. And so uh, get to be a part of this here at Hayes. And as we say that, here come the flags being represented by Marines, Air Force, Army, National Guard, and Air Force. Yeah, no Coast Guard out there. Did I get that in the right order? You may have had. <laughs> Looking now, as no, I didn't. I did have Air Force last. My father would uh, be remiss if I did not recognize his flag. Yeah, you need to do that. Don't disappoint Dad. Yep, and color guard, so I'm actually going to take my hat off now before waiting, now that we will have color guard coming out. And we will give you a feed from the crowd mic yeah. so everybody can hear what they are announcing. Junior ROTC being recognized now. Now introducing tonight's starting lineups. Introducing your Rouse Raiders. Leading off number nine. Oh, they're going to go into lineup announcements prior to. So that way the. The players are out here, which makes sense. Obviously, you want to have the players out here before the national anthem. And we will do the same here and go ahead and go into our announcements of the starting lineup. Lineup for the Rouse Raiders tonight. Leading off will be number nine, Rainer Heinrich at second base. Batting second will be number 12, Tyler Espinosa, the right fielder. Batting third will be number eight, Oscar Salazar, the starting pitcher for the Raiders. Batting fourth will be the center fielder, number 10, Landon Miller. Batting sixth. Or batting fifth will be number 22, Nathan Miller at third base. Batting sixth will be number six, Gavin Silva at third base. And Nathan Miller at first. I got that wrong. Uh, 
Batting seventh will be number 11, Andrew Sanchez. He's the designated hitter. He will be hitting for the left fielder, number 31, Adrian Graves. Batting eighth will be number seven, Jacob Solis at short. And batting ninth will be number 14, Xander Forsell. For the Hayes Hawks, leading off will be the shortstop, number two, Cooper Jen. Batting second will be the second baseman, number three, Adriano Fernandez. Batting third will be number 22, Holden Catrone at third base. Batting fourth will be number six, Gio Esquivel, the designated hitter. He will be hitting in place of the starting pitcher tonight, number 21, Mark Ramirez. Batting fifth will be the third baseman, number eight, Cullen Lee. Batting sixth will be the right fielder, number 18, Graydon Kidd. Batting seventh will be the center fielder, number 13, Alex Villalobos. Batting eighth will be the left fielder, number one, Joaquin Baruman. And rounding out the order will be the catcher, number 14, Joshua Guerrero. So a new catcher tonight, Jonathan. I notice it's not Pacheco uh, starting this game as it was on Tuesday night. Yeah, correct. And obviously having multiple catchers for the Hayes Hawks. Yeah, because you had Ryder Hernandez. Yeah. Or not Hernandez. What was his name? Um and again, real real quick, folks, uh, we are not going to be saluting and recognizing the American flag in left center field. We will be doing the national anthem for home plate uh, with the color guards flag. And as of right now, let's please take a moment to rise and recognize the national anthem. We'll be right back. So nice to see the military being shown some respect here today at Hayes, and good to be a part of it, Jonathan. Yes, sir. Yes, and we sir. got to meet some fans before the game, and they let us know that uh, they listened into our broadcast last night and really enjoyed getting to hear their team. Yeah, the actual uh, uh, home field uh, announcer uh, tonight was on the road last night, as, or I'm sorry, during uh, the game Wednesday, and he was able to, to chime in and jump in on the SHN broadcast and said he really enjoyed being able to, while on the road, listen in. Right. Not watch, not watch everybody because he's driving. Right. <laughs> but he was able to listen in on the game and absolutely enjoyed that and catching uh, what, what's happening in the plays. And, you know, again, please, anybody and everybody out there, let 
your folks let family members know about the broadcast. We'd love to have them uh, subscribe to Rouse Raider Baseball on SHN and then like it and set up for the reminder so that you'll yeah, be notified like before every game. And hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified when we go live for each and every game. Defensively for the Hawks tonight on the mound, number 21, Mark Ramirez. Behind the plate, number 14, Joshua Guerrero. At first base, number 22, Holden Catron. At second base, number three, Adriano Fernandez, which we saw him at third base exactly yes. on Tuesday night. With and what an arm Colin that kid Lee, has. With Colin Lee at on the pitcher's yep. mound, you, you take a cannon for an arm in your third baseman and move it to second, but you relieve him with a, with, right. with your hurlers. So. Number eight, Colin Lee at third. Number two, Cooper Jen at short. Number one, Joaquin Baruman in left. Number 13, Alex Lobos in center and number 18, Graydon Kidd in right field. Due up for your Raiders in the first. Heinrich Espinosa and Salazar. And so ready to get this thing underway. It's baseball time in Texas. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, before the game, I was able to visit a little bit with some of the players for Hayes and uh, Holden Catron, uh, the first baseman. What a big guy. I got to see him in the dugout. I'm like, man, okay, how big is he? Because he looks very big, a man among boys, you right. know, out on the field. And uh, I say, hey, man. Well, I, I'll, Football player? He I'll, goes, oh, I'll tell no, you this. I, I had to quit that. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this. Kids seem much bigger today than they were when I was in high school. It's in the water, man. <laughs> I guess so. All right, let's get this game underway here. Rainer Heinrich makes his way to the plate. Mark Ramirez ready to get this started. He toes in and goes for the windup. First pitch misses high for ball one. This is going to be a little more challenging for us to see from our vantage point here. Yeah, there, we're not going to really be able to see inside, outside, unfortunately. The 1-0, and Heinrich gives us a ride out to left. Wow, and again. And Baruman able to camp underneath it. You know, he started this game out just like he did on Wednesday night. He hit a rocket shot at the third baseman Wednesday night and was not able to obviously get on due to the line drive, and he did it again here and just a hard hit. Probably ball. had a, a little wind-aided help blowing back to Baruman away from left center, more to left. That fastball in for a strike. Yeah, so you don't want to change anything there with the approach from Rainer Heinrich. I mean, you made that great a contact. Salazar on deck. This one is lifted to right. Kid will oh. make it in time and retire Espinosa for out number two. And I'll tell you what, uh, great and kid. He uh, <laughs> was a little fooled on that. He came in, thought he had plenty of time, and sat back and realized the ball was dropping with the wind. Again, moving from right to left field here at Hawks. Wow. Yeah, yeah just call it Hayes Field or Hawks Field, I guess. That Hayes Field, Hawks name. Field. Hayes, Hayes Baseball is on the scoreboard, right. so Hayes Field. And, uh, you know, he, he, he got a little fool on that, but still able to make the catch. Oscar Salazar will stand in and take – for a strike on the inside corner. So far, he's only pitched five pitches. Well, and, and lays off for ball one. And that'll leave it up. Okay, a little outside. That drew some angst from some of the crowd here, thinking that that may have possibly been a strike, but did look to be low and away. So one one pitch. That's in the turf for ball two. Two and one. The count to Salazar. And what I love seeing here from Mark Ramirez, he's working extremely fast, and, and that is always a, a great sign from a pitcher. Salazar will hit this one in to right, and that will be a base hit for Salazar. One on with two outs as Landon Miller comes to the plate. Almost forgot the rest of my duties. I'm, I'm just, no. I'm just being a spectator here, watching the game. <laughs> Sorry, well, folks. Still I in pregame. I have not updated um, anything properly here. <laughs> Getting caught up in the Getting. start of this game. <laughs> Nathan Miller on deck. <laughs> 
Ramirez goes to the stretch. A swing and a miss on a fastball on the outside corner for strike one. Yeah, and if those from the 2021 season will recognize, this is the field. That pitch that goes in the turf, and Dawson Snow will courtesy run for Salazar, and he will scamper down to second yeah, so again, on the wild uh, pitch. Side of the back-to-back -back games of home runs from Aleppa. With the grand slam, oh yeah, uh, and then the uh, two run. We do have history here versus the Floresville Tigers. Miller will pop this one up. It's playable. Ramirez will make the catch, and that will do it for the Raider first. They get no runs on one hit. They leave one. After one half, we're scoreless. Yeah, and again, a, a very solid hit from Rainer Heinrich. A, another hit from Tyler Espinosa out to right field that got caught up in the wind. Oscar Salazar does get on, and then Landon Miller. So we're making contact. Um, two, two of the four very solid contact, and the others are just a little underneath the pitch. So we'll see how that goes. Do up for the Hawks. In their half of the first, Cooper Jen, Adriano Fernandez, and Holden Catron. Defensively for your Raiders. Number eight, Oscar Salazar on the mound. Behind the plate, number 14, Xander Forcell. At first base, number 22, Nathan Miller. At second base, number nine, Rainer Heinrich. At third base, number six, Gavin Silva. At short, number seven, Jacob Solis. In left field, number 31, Adrian Graves. In center field, number 10, Landon Miller. And in right field, number 12, Tyler Espinosa. Again, we want to welcome everybody to tonight's broadcast of Rouse Raider Baseball. I'm Michael Francis alongside the one and only Mr. Jonathan Caspar. Mr. Caspar Domus. <laughs> I do what I can. Always hope that the predictions are right, you know. So I had a good meeting with Coach before the game started, and you know he had nothing but good things to say about the guys tonight if they can just get the hitting because in BP they were Heinrich put four with Vince in BP. Oh, no doubt. Landon I mean, again, Miller put Landon Miller put one in the trees and. You know, 315 to left field, as I mentioned earlier, and the wind is blowing very crisply out that direction. So anything that gets caught up in the jet stream has a good chance of going a really long ways uh, into the trees here that just are past. I, if I'm not mistaken, after helping to go find the Jake Aleppa right. first home run, which was his first uh, and second of his career. Cooper Jen will come to the plate. And Salazar pitching from the stretch. First pitch high for ball one. Wind blowing kind of out of, out of the southeast. Had his hit foul down the third baseline. First strike one. And that'll even it up at one. One one pitch, a swing and a miss on a fastball for strike two. The Rouse girls playing softball next door versus the Hayes softball team. So it's a full house of Raiders and Hawks tonight. Raiders versus the Hawks. The one two delivery. Just off the plate for ball two. That was really a good-looking pitch. And two, two. This is lifted high and it, in play. In play. Like. And the catch will be made <laughs> and uh, by Gavin Silva. Xander Forsell and Gavin Silva both there, but 
Xander Forsell not really understanding how that anybody else was able to make the play as Gavin Silva crashed in and called it. So Xander doing proper stopped. Yeah, <laughs> and that was right. It was the right one. He was coming Correct. on. He could see the ball. It's in Xander front of was Xander was having to head. try to look straight up. Yes, sir. No doubt. Had so. Xander been able to rotate around and be able to see that coming at him would have been a lot easier play. But yeah, that's the right call there, and Xander doing exactly what he needed to by stopping and allowing Gavin Silva to come in and make the play. Adriano Fernandez will come to the plate. And Fernandez was unable to be retired. We Rouse could not retire him. First pitch high and outside for ball one. Swing and a miss for strike one. One one Ooh. fastball. Ooh. That was a smoke right there. That has a little bit of heat on that one right there. I'll tell and you. And he stays what. low. That's where Oscar lives. He, he does. He does live down low. He pitches downhill, and that's high and outside for ball two. And they're leaving it up. And as we noticed earlier in the season. If he doesn't get those calls, making that adjustment, can that happen? And two two, that's high and outside as well as Forcell had to climb the ladder to get to that. Yeah, and there's that's two within this at bat that he has lost a little outside. Patron on deck, the payoff pitch. Fastball, that's fouled away. Patron didn't even flinch. He didn't, and an automatic ball return as the ball bounces off of the very hard CMU backstop here that has a pad on it, but but that was hit so hard. It it sounded like it was just CMU, right? (laughs) Yeah. It reflected all the way back to Oscar. He had to make sure there wasn't a dent in the ball. That is fouled back out of play. Good turnout here for the Rouse yeah. contingent. And even tr- having to travel down 35. That's 35 is always a, a I didn't touch it. Head I was south. on Mopac the whole way here. Came in the back way. Man, maybe that's, well, I, I came from downtown, so. Oscar takes a long look in, the payoff pitch, and again, he fouls this off. He spoils a very good pitch. I'll tell you what, he's on it, but not just just a little bit behind. Not by much, but he's he's making he's on plane each time just a little little late. Salazar shakes the sign off and asks for another one. The payoff pitch at high for ball four and Fernandez will draw the walk. His first at bat on Tuesday night, he was hit by a pitch. Yes, off the old elbow pad. And I'll tell you what, Oscar was not able to get the breaking pitch working for him that at bat. The, the fastball was there, but it was being spoiled every time by Fernandez with the fastball. We'll see if he can make some adjustments here to get that off-speed working for that out. Esquivel on deck. One on with one out as Holden Catrone will stand at the plate, and he will take for a strike down the middle. And as I mentioned, speaking with Holden before the game, was a former linebacker for the uh, high school team, but he's like, yeah, I had to I had to give that up. The old one, this is fouled back for strike two. Move on to playing baseball. A little safer game, I think, was his his mindset there. Uh, <laughs> well, injuries take place in any sport that you play, and probably less likely in baseball. It tends to be ligaments, you know, in, in baseball, right? Yeah. So. The 0 2, a pitch down and away for ball one. Salazar trying to get him to chase. Yeah, and it's funny, just as you mentioned, we have Rouse softball playing here against Hayes on the field 
next door here, and we see a few of the folks jumping up and looking out there to see if they can catch a score. The breaking ball hit back up the middle. Salazar will knock it down. Throw to first. Okay. Will be in time. So. Wow. Wow, I mean, Oscar Rainer did, did everything double he could. Clutches. Yeah, he did. He did, and that worried me for a moment, but I think he realized he had a little bit more time. Catron, as big as he is, not the swiftest of foot up the line, so that did allow Rainer to double clutch, make sure he had the ball, <laughs> and think, make a good throw. I think he probably did more harm than good trying to knock that down as he slowed it down, and Rainer had to really come up on it to make that play. That'll bring up Gio Esquivel. Esquivel, the designated hitter, hitting for Ramirez. Yeah, but that hit does work just as good as a bunt. As Swing does, and a miss for strike one. As it does advance Fernandez to second. I think Oscar's mindset was if he could have made that catch, he would have had time to get Fernandez and possibly a double play to get out of the inning. The 0 1 pitch, that's high for ball one, and that will even it up. Salazar working more deliberately, taking his time. Fernandez will extend his lead at second. Nobody holding him on. Yeah, Rainer kind of plays back and forth. That'll be fouled back. As he chases a <laughs> but high he, fastball. But he strike. even knew he just barely missed that. He was right on it, just a hair under. Luckily, it was a higher fastball, so that did create the not quite making solid contact. One and two. Salazar checks Fernandez at second. The breaking ball just gets away from him. Again. Again, he's and he is wiping that arm and looks back in at coach and is like, man, I just don't understand this tonight. That is the fourth time that he has lost control of that breaking pitch. So, Deuce is wild for Esquivel. Two balls, two strikes with two out and a runner at second. I guess you'd call that four of a kind. Oh, there he it is. He gets caught looking. Fast ball on the outside corner. And the Raiders get out of not a jam, I would say, but but had a runner at second. So at any rate, no runs on no hits, one left, and after one complete, we're scoreless here in Hayes or at Jack C. Hayes High School, Hayes Field. No, I'm going to go check on him. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Mike. Michael, we, we have volleyball royalty in the house tonight for the UT Longhorns with Riley Heinrich down here. Hey. Visiting her younger, not youngest brother, but younger yeah. brother, Rainer Heinrich. I uh, did see her before the game, you know, now, with Steve. And correct me if I'm wrong. Did I see that she had entered the transfer portal? I thought she was done. Oh, was she? I thought, I thought she, she, I thought was she senior entered the, year. Tra the transfer portal. I mean, unless she was had it? time left, my understanding was senior year, she was done after this year. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully I'm wrong. I mean, I could. We, she I mean, is just here to my right. I could ask her. <laughs> do up for the Raiders in the. Second, Nathan Miller, Gavin Silva, and Andrew Sanchez. Uh, Jonathan conferring with Riley on what her plans are. Well, Jonathan touch give her the mic and interview her. All right. You probably do a much better job on the microphone than your dad does. <laughs> yeah, 
Mark Ramirez back out on the mound to get the second started. Nathan Miller comes to the plate. Gavin Silva on deck. Ramirez from the windup. He will deal that outside corner for strike one. All right, Jonathan, you got to fill us in. I did. So you were correct. You did see. I was able to talk with Miss Riley. That's high and inside for ball one, and that'll even up. Quickly, and uh, she did let us know that, yes, yeah, she has entered the portal because she is using her COVID year. Ah, the 1-1, one, one, this is lifted high, and will just go, well, well, it goes foul, but it was a, kind of a question of whether or not it was yeah, going to go over the not, fence not or the Catron fence. was able to get to it because you got that deep pocket where it angles back to the dugout. I don't know that you can see it in the camera shot. Well, that and you also have probably the rail um, on the dugout that would have stopped him from possibly making that play. So, But, yeah, Wanted she to. said she is in the portal. So, one two confirmed. pitch. He will hit this one foul down the first base side. And look at Coach Perez stepping up with his Manny. first base coaching box fielding percentage. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye on that, see where she goes. She's had four years at UT. One and two. The pitch. Right, it's the outside great, corner great. catches him looking. What a beautiful pitch. And even from up here, I mean, yes, it could yeah. have potentially been towards the outer half, but it was but it not was, off by yeah. much. It was, it was a good pitch. Gavin Silva will come to the plate. Andrew Sanchez on deck. Yeah, able to dot that corner. First pitch. Slider in for a strike. Swing and a miss from Silva. So now if Gavin can, Silva can make contact like he did on a few of those pitches Wednesday night. Another fastball down the middle. You know, he may have a better opportunity on this field with the wind blowing out to left versus, unfortunately, the wind blowing hard and in from the left. Breaking ball sails away for ball one. At Rouse Field that saw everything just being knocked down. The one-two pitch. Just misses outside. That was a good-looking pitch. You know, that's, that's one of those things, you know, we've, we've talked about. When pitches are that close, do you really want to leave it in the umpire's hands? And especially after watching the player, the batter, before you get rung up on that pitch. And he will foul this one back. Catch it, Jonathan. Oh, jump yeah. on the fence. Oh, oh no. man. man. Gosh, Jonathan. My arms aren't quite that long, and All right. if I'd well, have really stretched out, you'd have been doing the rest of this broadcast by well, yourself, Well, your broadcast sir. booth fielding percentage <laughs> just took a huge horrible. hit. Horrible. horrible. <laughs> the 2-2. Two -two. Fastball misses low, and the count works full. Yeah, if not mistaken, they really didn't have to make any changes to the netting here. Ball four. Just a skosh high. And the Raiders have another runner aboard. Okay, so I had the discussion again with Andrew Sanchez before the game. Did you? I did. Okay. It, the last time I had the discussion with him, it went very well. Okay. At length. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. We'll see what happens All right. tonight. <laughs> Jacob Solis on deck. Ramirez from the stretch. Breaking ball high for ball one. Silva extends his lead at first. Takes another step. Ramirez checking over his right shoulder. That'll bounce in the turf, but... Guerrero able to keep it in front of him. I'll tell you what, great job Silver there hold. of keeping the ball in front of him as he was able to eyes up, make sure Gavin Silva didn't get too antsy over there at first base. That one will sell high for ball three. And Sanchez is a tall young man. He is. He's a big guy, big target. Take, I mean, he's being patient at the plate. You know, the other night he was not near as patient and letting pitches come to him. 3-0. and 
3-0 pitch. That's high for ball four. And Ramirez walks back-to-back batters. And I think he'll be very happy that he is not at Kyle C. or Aggie field because the... That's Bluebell Park. Yes, sir. Well, I, people may not you understand that know it's... That. I do, but people probably don't know that it's Bluebell Park. So I figured Aggies, well, baseball... Well, you say Dish Falk, everybody knows you're talking about Texas. Because right? we're close to... UT. Uh, even, it, even, to UT. even if you're in, in uh, Fort Worth from TCU. Man, because people are yeah, I'm not a UT fan. Sorry. I'm an Aggie. Say what you will, but uh, you know, ball five. Yeah, <laughs> we do have activity in the Raider bullpen. And potentially ball six, and they would be saying ball six at this point as it was ball Jacob six. Jacob <laughs> will take for a ball. And those that have been able to frequent any of those games know and how loud that can be. One oh, this is an infield fly, and they call it. Yeah, and the batter's out. And for those at home, an infield fly, you have runners on first and second with only one out. They will automatically call an infield fly because it would be very easily for the shortstop, infield, whomever that is, to fake like they're going to catch it, drop the ball intentionally, and then the runners are stuck and easy double play. So that just takes that out of the equation. That will bring up... Xander Forsell, who's had a hot bat as of late, he will take for a ball another pitch in the turf. Well, I'd love to see him get the hat trick tonight for following up his home run and triple. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I believe he also had the single, so he, he will hit double. Down yeah. the left. Silva will round third and head for home, and he will slide in and score. And a throw to second, and Sanchez is safe. Looked like he was out, but he must have slid his arm in front of the tag. But we do have some Hayes Hawks fans that are upset. Upset exactly as right as... Raiders get one run, and Xander Forsell is on fire. And there's an immediate adjustment here from Coach Crimpine. How was it even close for him to not be at second? When the ball was hit, he was already at first. So we have a pinch runner we coming in. We do have a pinch Sanchez. runner coming in, and I think that's the reason why is because of the fact that he was not – very quick or attentive on getting down the base path and getting to second to make that play very quick or very close. And we do have number 27, Thompson. Connor Thompson? Yes, 27 is Connor. That would be correct. Connor Thompson. Heinrich will hit this one to second. The throw to second will be in time on the fourth down. That's a fielder's choice. As that'll go four six on the put out of four cell to end the Raider second, but they get one run on one hit and they leave one. On to the bottom we go. Raiders leading this one, one nothing, over the Hawks. Do up for the Hawks. Colin Lee, Graydon Kidd, and Alex Villalobos. We want to take this opportunity to recognize our double sponsors. Austin Summit Group, Terry McDaniel and Company Investment, and Team Guerrero. Thank you so much for your valuable and kind support of Rouse Raider Baseball. It is greatly appreciated. A shout out to the Rouse Raider Booster Club as well for their sponsorship of making all of this possible. Yes, sir. And and keeping us up to date in our equipment and making sure that we're able to get this to you. So 
like I like I mentioned, they're going to, they're in the process of getting me the new video encoder so that uh, hopefully this will take care of any video problems. Yeah, I, I mentioned that earlier, and you know, definitely would love to see that not happen so that we can make sure to bring the entire game <laughs> to everybody at home and around the world, right? Right, right. around the world. Uh, as we talked earlier that we had folks from all over the place last year jump in on our broadcast from Cuba to New York, Chicago, Montana, New Jersey, New Jersey, California, Florida, Louisiana. Colin Lee makes his way to the plate, his first at bat of the night. Graden Kidd on deck. First pitch for Salazar. This is lifted high to left. And Graves will make the catch. A wow. long fly ball out at the warning track. Warning track power, and it's not a sandy warning track to really let the fielder know what's going on as it's just an, a, just an change adjustment color. <laughs> from green to brown turf. Not from grass to dirt. It's Green. Turf to turf, just a little bit of different color. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, that could be a very good thing for an outfielder to understand where he's at is knowing does he have gravel underneath his feet from a grass transition as warning tracks are meant to be that way. Great and kid comes to the plate, and he had a back good to back out. shots. And Graves will make the catch there. And <laughs> both hit about the same place. Move. Yeah, he didn't have to move very far from where he was. And two pitches, two outs. It's the Salazar Graves show in this inning. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the, the difference there being Cullen Lee being a right handed batter, pulling the ball, and then right after him was a lefty batter that hits the oppo. First pitch taken by Villalobos for ball one. That's only the third pitch of the inning for <laughs> yeah. Salazar. First pitch swing, first pitch swing. This is hit down Second the line to Miller. Miller will throw the first in time, and he gets him. That'll go 5-3 on the put out of Villalobos, and they go in order in the second. Uh, not Miller, Gavin Silva. Remember, oh, Gavin, Gavin, Silver, Gavin that's right. Silva to Miller. Yeah, Miller's at first. I'm <laughs> Miller, sorry. Ma- I'm so used to Nathan being there, understood, right? Understood, making that adjustment. And, again, what we normally see is that Nathan Miller makes his way over to first when Oscar Salazar is pitching, and that did remain true. But Gavin Silva now having come in in third base right. uh, versus uh, Gayton, who is normally at third base in that situation. Uh, but Gavin Silva coming in, and that brings him uh, not having a long outing Wednesday night, so not needing a lot of rest time for that arm and allowing him to come in and be very effective over there at third. Do up for the Raiders in the third. Espinosa, Salazar, and Miller. So we got the two, three, and four hitters coming up in the lineup. Wow. And I don't Oh, there's yeah, a lot of, I think, uh, head coach here for Coach Howard. Fox, coach Howard is not very happy with something that went on. And, and I heard the folks here for the Hawks in the stands saying that's the second time that's happened. So I'm not really sure what's going on and what Coach Howard is. Well, well, he may have been upset about that pickoff at second, or not the pickoff, but the throw back uh, to second. Throw that yeah. his foot was off. Okay. Which it did. Uh, so the throw from Gavin Silva yeah, did take Nathan Miller off the but bag, but he put his foot, his his foot was on the bag when he caught the ball and came off, and he just put it back on for right. insurance. And, and I still think putting it back on beat the runner yeah, as much did. as the throw beat the runner. So it, it was almost like he was out twice and uh, got a little heated here as we have some folks right in front of us that let the umpire know about their disgust with that. Call I'm, I'm and trying to remember, were we here last year when one of the fans were ejected out? Was that here? Was that, was that here? It was one game last year where we were playing on the road, and one of the parents got ejected 
Yeah, I'm not from sure. From oh, look at this. And, and the actual home plate umpire is voicing his displeasure with the fan right. that is also voicing. So there's actually been a little pack and back banter here right. between the home plate umpire and the fans here in the stadium. So Espinoza takes for a strike. Very interesting to see if how this unfolds. You always hate to see it when you no, know, I mean, fans get it, get involved in the game. And wow, another great pitch on the inside corner for strike two. Yeah, Tyler Espinosa in a hole quick yeah, here. Quick. The 0-2 pitch. This is fouled and out of play. So you like sportsmanship. You know, as and I get it, but I mean, this is high school baseball. Hey, I'm not going to say I haven't been there. <laughs> he put he pokes oh. this one out to center field. Oh, it has and a Bill on it. Will be able to step a few feet in and make the catch. Round number one. I'll say what crazy there. He just flipped his hands at that to make contact, knowing that it was more than likely going to be a strike call on the outer half and got enough of it that it made it to the low post, but I thought it was going to drop for at least a moment. Leo Lobos playing on that Hawks logo, logo out in the center field. A nice little change up in for a strike. Dialed in here as he is just pumping the strikes. Fastball, this is hit to second. It'll be played by Fernandez. They throw to first in time. I'm going to go 4-3. Two away. As Landon Miller will make his way. Nathan Miller on deck. Got the Miller and Miller show. Miller and Miller show. Or Law Firm, however you want to look at it. The Bat Firm of Miller and Miller. And I would love to see or a the Batting Firm of Miller and Miller. Batting that? Firm, that would be great to see. Miller will poke this one out to center field, and Villalobos makes the catch, and that will go. Raiders go in order in the third. After two and a half, it's Raiders one, Hawks nothing. And I'll tell you what, that right there, that shot from Landon Miller is one of the hardest balls to be played by an outfielder right at it. And Villa Lobos did exactly what he needed to. He actually sat, backed up a few steps to recognize, okay, how hard is this hit? Right. Okay, it's, it's now going to be in front of me. Let me move up. And was able to make the play look very easy, but again, not a very easy play for an outfielder. Do up for the Hawks in the third via Lobos, I'm sorry, Bruman, Guerrero, and Jen. Yeah, just a, a great night here. We're not having the, quite the cold as we do have the, the wind from the south. And uh, we are actually, you know, somewhat, somewhat cloudy. So not having extremely long shadows here as the sun is right behind us over sort of over our left shoulder, but behind clouds here. So. We'll see if it stays true to the norm here in Texas lately where as the sun dies down, so does the wind. But not a brisk wind tonight, so not nearly a problem with us camped outside of the press box. Yeah. Joaquin Baruman will make his way to the plate. Baruman, the left fielder for the Hawks. Salazar staying exclusively with the stretch. He has at times in other games gone back to the windup. But so far tonight, he is pitched exclusively from the stretch. Fastball on the inside corner for a strike. And that actually brushed Baruman back because he thought it was maybe inside. The 0-1, Bunt on a fastball down the middle for strike two. Now let's see if Salazar... Goes back to the. Can he get the breaking pitch? Slider, or a cutter, or something off speed? A curve. Change up. Okay. That'll do Very it. Very effective change up as Baruman was well out in front of that pitch. 
offered by Osal. And this will be our first opportunity nice. to see something we, we didn't Guerrero. catch. You and I didn't. Usually we're on top of that. Both catchers sporting the number, number 14. 14. Yeah. I didn't know. I caught that during my write-up of your card, but yeah. I just didn't say anything. <laughs> but, well, yes, I did see that. Usually you you keep me informed. Oh, man. What's I, going on, man? I'm sorry. Fastball. This is lifted high. And, and that's it. This, that no, could be playable. Play. And Sanders yeah. Porcel will make the catch. And said, so don't anybody get in my way. This is my fly ball. <laughs> Xander not getting the opportunity earlier with Gavin Silva crashing his party. That'll bring up Cooper Chin. Cooper Chin popped up in the foul territory on a play made by Gavin Silva. Yes. <laughs> the exact play that I had just mentioned. Fastball high and outside for ball one. Interesting enough, we had quite a few uh, extra spectators. Fastball cut on and missed for strike one. In the house against, uh, with the Rouse Hayes game at Rouse Field. Radar guns, those kind of spectators. Not sure who they were representing, but not really seeing any of them tonight. 1-1. One, one. This is hit foul and out of play. I'm going to bounce in front of the concession stand. Yeah, which there's a lot of folks down there. Don Miller, I see him. <laughs> One and two, the count to Jen. Nobody on with two outs. The pitch for Salazar outside. Yeah, great pick in there. In the turf for ball two. Hey, you said turf, not grass or dirt. I'm proud of you. Hey. That's a good job. Well, I've said turf. I've been doing well. <laughs> the deuce is wild. The swing and a miss. Oh, the off speed again. Change up. Gets him. They go in order in the third, both sides. And after three complete, it's one nothing rounds. And this is another game that's going rather quickly. As you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, that. Uh, Ramirez works works quickly. Salazar, Very he doesn't necessarily quick. work quickly tonight, but he got two real quick outs in the last inning. Yes, yeah. and and this well, even as this well. One. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So just a, a real quick look in here. And well, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pitches in that inning. Yeah, and Ramirez, 39 pitches, 24 for strikes. Unbelievable right. ratio there. Oscar Salazar, on the flip side, 36 pitches, 24 strikes. Wow. <laughs> so, a, unbelievable comparison there. Had it not been for the one inning with several hits, four rouse, and the walk, we would not have a 1-0 lead right now. So... Yeah, very, very good pitcher's duel that we have from not your do up for number the, one guys. Do up for the Raiders, Miller, Silva, and Sanchez. Well, I mean, you look at it from on Tuesday night. The top half was struggling at the plate. The bottom half came in in the last two innings of the, of the game and, and took control and generated offense and got six runs across the plate. Yes, they did. And Sandra we're finally Forcell. able to, to chase Cullen Lee out. Yes, yeah, Xander Forsell, Jacob Salise being a big part of that, that offensive outing from the – yeah, and that's the second or third time we have actually seen him up. We do have some activity, and I think it's a little bit more recognizable activity than Miller it was take, earlier. And or a strike, fastball down the middle. Number 55. Not on Miller the will hit this one to Fernandez at second to throw to first in time. That'll go 4 3. On the put out. That'll bring up Gavin Silva. Silva drew a walk his first time up and came around to score. 
he's not on the line. So I'm wondering if this is just more of a rehab type thing, keeping the arm loose. Silva will foul this one for a strike. Andrew Sanchez on deck. We got one delivery. A check swing. He went around. Check and he shook his head. He's not even giving him a strike. He just shook his head. Did well, the umpire line called umpire, it. Yeah. yeah, he called Home plate umpire called it. The 0-2. That's down and away for ball one. One, two, pitch. This is hit out to left. Right at him again. Baruman makes his third catch of the night. Yeah, very solid hit again out to left field as we've seen that from both sides tonight. Taking somewhat advantage of the win were the Hawks, whereas the Raiders hitters have hit line drives out to left field. Andrew Sanchez will come in. He drew a walk his first time up. And he will take for a strike on the outside corner on a pitch that looked down in a bit way. Low, looked a bit low for me, but. The one That misses low. Same same height, at least, on that one, but definitely more. That one over looked the a little lower. But yeah, it was more of a plate. 1 1. He will lay off for ball two. But again, both Ramirez and Oscar Salas are recognizing that the home plate umpire does like that lower half pitch. Liner to second. Fernandez will make the catch. L4. And the Raiders go in order in the fourth. Two up. For the Hawks in the fourth, Fernandez, Catron, and Esquivel. And once again, the Raider bats very crisply hit balls by both Andrew Sanchez and Gavin Silva and walking away with nothing. I want to take this opportunity to recognize our triple sponsors, Four Wheel Parts and B to Z Engineering. Thank you so very much for your sponsorship of Rouse Raider Baseball. So that hearing this song reminds me of uh, my son back playing JV, Tim Francis, uh, back in 20, 2010. And he's out in right field, and he's sitting there doing the dance for this song, right? So he's out there doing Love this. Love it. Love it. I mean, that's the, the dance. I mean, I, and I've got it on video somewhere. That's so I great. To, that's great. I'll, I'll pull it up every once in a while, and I'll show Norma so she can have a laugh. I, I can only envision it right. and get a laugh out of that. So that's that's awesome. That's awesome. Of course, back of the days of their uh, – T-ball, you know, where they're playing in the dirt. They're making right. dirt mounds on in the infield and chasing butterflies in the outfield. And right, <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget that. When Tim first started playing Little League Baseball, it was the very first year of kid pitch, and he was put in right field. And so that's where he got to play that skinny, lanky little lefty yep. oh, yeah. out in right field. And, of course, kid pitch, all the kids are trying to learn their craft and their control is off. And he's up to bat and he goes to bunt and gets plumped right in the back. Oh, Lord. Down he went. But did he pull the bat back? Uh, so that it wasn't uh, called a know, strike. Probably not. <laughs> well, it was. It hit him. So I mean, swing and a miss from Fernandez. But during a bunt, if he still got that bat over the top of the plate, yeah, it was practice. It was practice. It was practice. Oh, okay. It was practice. Okay. Okay. It practice. won the game. Okay. It was we're, talking, we're talking about practice. The O one misses low for ball one. Not a game. Practice. 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 We're talking about practice. <laughs> One one pitch. Foul. 
for strike two. And again, just barely missing. Salazar sticking with the stretch. Off the bat of Fernandez. He's... The one, two, just misses high, and that was that was a, a pretty outside. that was a, a pretty good looking pitch, yeah, but a little I bit. Say high. A little, little outside of course, high. it looks a little lower from our angle because sure. our, where we're at, we're so high. Yeah, we're well off. For, we're well off. Uh, well off up the, the first base line here. <laughs> That's fouled away, and the count will remain even at two. And from the looks of it. A uh, quick score update for our Rouse softball team. They are down 2-0 in the second. This one is lifted high into right field. Tyler Espinosa, Superman, will make the kick. Yes, those that are on X uh, did get to see the post from his father, Kenny Espinosa. And on Facebook. You put it on Facebook. Yep, and it said Superman. Tyler right. Espinoza with the clip of him flying out of nowhere in the video, flying out of right. nowhere to make the diving catch for the third out in that inning, or in the, what was it, probably third inning, third or fourth inning Wednesday right. night's game. Awesome. Holden Catron will make his way to the plate. He's 0 for 1. He grounded the second his first time up. And he will take. Wow, what a beautiful pitch. Another non-call for ball one. But he's done that to both. I mean, he's consistent. He's done it to both pitchers. Fastball high and inside for ball two. Gio Esquivel on deck. The 2-0 pitch. A fastball down the middle for a strike. Two one. Oh, there's oh, the there's the makeup call, maybe. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> two two the count to control. That pitch in the turf. The ball three and Catron works it full. Scoring update from the major leagues. That'll miss low for ball four and Salazar issues his first three passes. If you're a Rangers fan, it looks good. They're leading the Houston Astros 7-1 to one in the top of the third. My Astros have absolutely been offensively inept the last several games. Let's bring up Gio Esquivel. As well as the pitching not really He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. This is hit foul down the third baseline. For strike one, he tattooed that. Yeah, he did. Loud echo off the metal bat, aluminum bat. Uh, aluminium? Which is probably not that anymore. It's Catron extends his lead at first. A high changeup for ball one. Little off speed action. All the aces out there on display. Lee on deck. Ball one strike, one, one out, one on. Fastball. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. All right. Nice pitch, Oscar. Yes, it was. And, uh, Wow. Not what? getting the strike call on that one. That, could, that couldn't have been painted any better. Swing and a miss. Yeah, and interestingly enough on that one, he swings at what was not a – I mean, it was, it was a great pitch from Oscar Salazar with a lot of breaking movement in it, but that was well off the plate and outside is where it ended, and he offers at that pitch and did not on the pitch before that. That was right down the middle. The 2-2, two -two, that's in the dirt for ball three, and – Another full count. Yeah. 
on the payoff pitch. Fastball catches him looking for strike three. Yeah, and, and of course, Esquivel not liking that at all as a strike call because the exact same pitch was called a ball earlier in the at-bat. But as you mentioned, Mr. Francis, you don't want to leave it up to the home plate umpire on anything that's close. You Colin, to be trying to Colin Lee will make his way to the plate. He'll take for ball one. You have got to foul that off, stay alive for something better that you like as a hitter. Lee 0 for 1. He flew out to left. Wow. <laughs> I would say that was low. I would say that was low. It looked like it was over the plate, but low. So yeah, You're probably right. Co close, close pitch nonetheless. High fastball for ball three. Wow. And, and again, this possibly could be as a result of Colin Lee's first at bat where he sent a shot, warning track shot out to left field. Oscar just being a little bit more cautious of ball placement here. Fastball low for ball four. And two aboard with two outs for Great and Kid. And Kid flew out to left. Left just right after Colin Lee. Right did. after he did. Yeah. So, and he was a tough out on Tuesday night. Go back and look at his. Great number 18, Great he had a single and a double and a popped up to short. Again, I, I will take a opposite field hit versus a big guy like Colin Lee pulling it. Fastball in for a strike. Especially with that wind blowing out there and having an opportunity to to go yard. <laughs> Kid 0 for 1. He flew out to left his first time. Left. Swing and a miss. And he was swinging for the fences. He spun out of his shoe. He's like, I'm not trying to get warning track power this time. I'm trying to send it deep. Wow, what a swing. He almost lost his balance and fell on that one as hard as he swung. Nothing at two, the count. Two on with two out. Ball inside in the turf for ball one. Yeah, Xander Forsell doing a great job of sliding to his right and keeping that body in front of that ball with two runners on. Not risk allowing them to get to third and second on a pass ball. One, two, foul tip. Oh. <laughs> and just in and out of the glove of Xander would have been Strike third three. out of the inning and out of this inning, but just not able to corral that as he sort of punched the glove, not happy with himself after that. Salazar comes set and then the one two pitch. Fastball oh, catches him looking. Exact same pitch that rings up Fernandez or Esquivel, excuse me, gets kid. Possibly looking for that off speed because he has set a few of the guys up earlier in this game with a changeup, and that was a fastball right down the pipe that gets on him before he even knows what had happened. Do up for the Raiders in the fifth. Solis, Forcell, and Heinrich. Mark Ramirez makes his way back out to the mound to pitch the fifth. A game that is moving rather quickly. We're five minutes into the eight o'clock hour. An hour and five minutes in. A beautiful, brisk night 
here in Buda, Texas at Jack C. Hayes High School on Hawk, Hawk Field or Hayes Field. It's kind of like Rouse. It doesn't really have a, a name on it. When you walk into uh, the baseball park there at Rouse, there's a sign that's the Andrew ISD, Rouse High School. I just prefer to call it Raider Field. It's a self-proclaimed name. And since I'm the longest tenured parent of the baseball program and of this school, is my oldest was part of the Alpha class when the doors opened in 2008. Jacob Solis will make his way to the plate. Solis popped up into an infield fly his first time. He's 0 for 1. Ramirez winds and delivers. That one's in the turf for a ball. One and oh. Pitch misses a little high for ball two. A two pitch. This is hit high into shallow left field. Baruman comes in on it, and makes the catch, and that will do it for Solis. One away. For Xander Forsell. Forsell with an RBI single. His first time up. He's one for one. Yeah, Xander doing his part to get the Raiders on the board for the first and only run of the game. And he will take for a strike down the middle. Oh. Breaking Ooh. ball misses outside for ball one, and that's another one of those. Well, he has that, that he has that pause, and it almost makes you look like he's ready to call that strike. But that was a foul tip for strike two. Yeah, Xander recognizing that was a great pitch to handle for him, and he just misses it. And, not happy with himself. One, two. This is hit back up the middle to short. Jen has it. The throw to third, first in time. That'll go 6 3 on the put out. Uh, four cell. And out number two. Oh, and that does see Rainer Heinrich back up to see if he can't. Change things up as he's 0 for 2 tonight. Heinrich is hit into a fielder's choice and flown out to left. And he will take for a strike on the outside. That's a that's a 50-50 call right there. Is fifty percent of the time he'll call a strike. The other half, he won't. Exactly. Pitch up high for ball one. Again, we want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching Raider baseball tonight. I'm Michael Francis alongside Jonathan Caspar. That pitch misses low. Ball two, two and one. And can't quite see the field, but something big happening over there on the softball side. Pitch outside and away for ball three. I guess they just got an out. It must have been. Maybe. Our, our vantage point here is only able to Heinrich see the left Heinrich will roll hand. on this one, and it'll be played by Fernandez. And the throw will be in time. They go in order in the fifth. That's three straight innings that... Ramirez has retired the side in order. Yes, he has. And, and once again, just getting stronger as the game goes along. 
as well as Oscar Salazar. I mean, both have made very quick work of each of their innings as we progress here to the bottom of the fifth. Do up for Hayes, Villalobos, Baruman, and Guerrero. And it'll be interesting to see, is there at any point, as Coach Krempe did Wednesday night, will he elect to move away from Oscar Salazar, the starting pitcher, like he did with Gavin Silva, and bring in some of those fresh arms that really need some more work? Uh, we did get to see... Dalton Holbrook Holbrook, as well as Nathan Miller both come in Wednesday night even though Gavin was having a, a great game. I mean he had, he did have a, a two walks uh, similarly to Oscar Salazar at this point and this is the time where we had Holbrook come in was in the fifth and then Nathan Miller went sixth and seventh in right. uh, for the win. Villalobos will make his way to the plate. He's 0 for 1. He's rounded the third his first time up. Fastball in for a strike. Real one, a swing and a miss on a changeup down and away. Swing and a miss for strike three, and that'll do it for Villalobos. That'll bring up. Joaquin Baruman. Baruman, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Yeah, and where the early part of the game, Oscar Salazar was having a difficult time controlling that breaking pitch, the, the curve, slider, you know, whatever is in his repertoire. And That's a foul tip for a strike. And now he's finding that grip and finding that groove. And, again, all pitches really working well as they are for Ramirez. This is hit out towards shallow, shallow center. Uh, and Landon Miller will make, make an errant throw as he tried to make the play. So a crazy, crazy chain of events there as it was very off the end of the bat. It just was a shallow ball into center field that saw Rainer Heinrich, Jacob Salise, and Landon Miller all converge, and nobody really called it called the ball as it drops between the three of them. Well, and, and in that instance, nobody's there to cover second. Just like that, there goes the no-hitter. Yeah, and Landon Miller recognizing nobody's there to cover because the other two guys are out there with him he runs in catches on a very playable and he does end up catching i'm sorry who was who was batting uh baruman baruman sorry he catches baruman halfway down the line and decides to try to make the throw to first overthrows nathan miller who catches the ball off of a very hard deflection from the dugout area, but wasn't able to make a throw down the second. So here we are with a one-out double. <laughs> After all of that. Well, no, it's not a double. It's Sorry. a single. Single. He advances on, on the bad throw. Yes. Well, looks like, what do we got going uh, number six, ten. Oh, oh he's putting a... Well, but is that a different... Is number 16 Yeah, it's different. different. Yeah, okay, so he's coming in for Josh Guerrero, who would be up in the lineup, and number 16 is Ryder Garcia. Ryder Garcia, the freshman. The freshman, as we did find out previously in the in, before the game. And that's actually going to now draw a quick visit to the mound from Coach Krimpine. 
Well, I'm sure he was uh, a little bit upset. Well, it's, I mean, that's a that's a ball hit into no man's land. And, you know, nobody, I mean, Landon Miller was crashing as hard as he could. I mean, he's always going to do everything he can to get to that ball. I don't know if somebody called it late because it did show Landon Miller actually backed off at the last moment. Oh, are we still changing helmets? Okay, <laughs> not sure what, what that's all about, but maybe mics have gone down again, or earpiece is falling out, possibly. Hey, we have a courtesy runner running for, or a pinch runner running for uh, the rooming. That pitch in the turf. And that hits for sale's hand. He's his number yet. Oh, we didn't pull the binoculars out. That's what it is. No, but I mean, I still haven't. He hasn't turned. They don't have numbers on the front. Well, they do actually have numbers on the front, so. Swing and a miss. For a strike. And that'll take the count one and one. It is a double digit. Maybe 12, not sure. And that's what I was thinking was would be Tyler McInvale. Coach Crimpane's going to call time. Uh, he's just wanting to double check. Xander uh, being hit in the hand, he has actually seen Xander shaking that finger quite frequently. Got to make sure that if they recognize that he has hurt his throwing hand and they decide to break for third base, yeah, there you go. Okay, it's just, hey, let's let's do a, a quick throw or two. So, so the reverse uh, warm-up pitch from catcher to yeah, right. pitcher, just to make sure he is capable of making a throw down to third if the base runner decides to steal third. One one pitch. Fastball in for a strike. And the count goes one and two. Cooper Jen on deck. Salazar comes set and the pitch. This is hit foul and out of play. No, it's it is a single digit. Is it? It is. Pitch high and outside for ball two, and that'll even it up. The 2-2, two -two. that is hit down to first. That'll be stepped on the bag by Nathan Miller. That'll go three new unassisted. We're out number two. The tying run just 90 feet away for Cooper Jen. Cooper Jen 0 for 2. He has popped up to third and struck out. I'm trying to see if I can't see who the pinch runner is. Fastball in for a strike. Salazar getting out ahead. We do have activity going in the Raider bullpen as well. 
Multiples. Probably have Carson Henderson up. Fastball gets the outside corner for strike two. Okay, so it is number one, which is Joaquin Barubin. I guess Barubin. that's wrong. Yeah, it's, he's, he's running for himself. I okay. thought I saw two digits on there. Okay. Was, so did I. I was thinking the that. net, I think, is jacking with us here. Change up outside for ball one. And then, no, actually, that is Holbrook warming up for the Raiders. One, two. That's in on the hands and fouled away. And Trace Schluger. Also warming up for the Raiders. The one two pitch. Change up catches it. Oh, wow. He went or possibly went around. And the entire Raider defense started wild. making their way to, home, to the dugout, and that was not called. A strike. This is wild for Cooper Jen. Oscar Salazar with the pitch. Fastball blows by for strike three to end the Hawks' fifth. They get no runs on one hit, they leave one. And after five complete, it's one nothing rounds. And you talk about a pitching duel. I'll tell you what, and as you would imagine, after feeling that they had already had the strike and being out of the inning, the next pitch, Oscar Salazar reached back and absolutely threw a nuke right down the middle for a swing and miss. And he was fired up after that pitch. So great, great bat. Duel that we do have going here. So, shout out to all of our home run sponsors: Tumble Twenty Two in Cedar Park, Mode Design Company, Oots Environmental, Toyota of Cedar Park, and Mackay Ford in Georgetown. Thank you all so very much for your sponsorship of Rouse Raider Baseball. It is greatly appreciated. Have you tried the OG sandwich yet? I, we no, just I talked about it. I have not. I'm not eating bread. I told you that. Uh, well, you can get it grilled. No, I can eat the chicken, just not the bread. <laughs> you know, or not the breaded chicken. You can, you but can I'm get a, the grilled in a dude, bowl there's, without. There's things that I have guilty pleasures about. <laughs> and that is if going to a Mexican food restaurant. Chips, and, Chips salsa. and salsa. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. chicken tenders got to be breaded. They got to have the batter on. That's why I like canes so much. I love, I love that because they're they're more kind of home style. Yeah, they are. They are. They're not yeah. a do up for the Raiders. Is that what you here in the ready? sixth? Raiders. Well, Tyler. Tyler Espinosa, Oscar Salazar, and Landon Miller. Espinosa, 0 for 2, has flown out to center and right. He will take for a ball. Oscar Salazar on deck. Espinosa shows bunt, lays off for ball two. And again, Ramirez working very quickly. That pitch in on the hands for ball three. Not hit him? Wow, that was so close. 3-0 the count. And he will take for ball four on a pitch low. <laughs> but it was a, could have been a borderline pitch. Now you've got some speed on the base pass. And it was Oscar Salazar. And Salazar Oscar. is one for two. He has singled and grounded to second. And hands down has been one of the hottest hitters for the Raiders throughout this season. And he will take for a ball. You know, with an average well into the 400s. 
and power to boot as he has multiple home runs already on this season as well. So Ramirez from the stretch. And a 1-0. That's high for ball two. And right after that, going. And Coach Howard will make his way out to the mound to yeah, that's six straight his, balls. His infield. Six straight pitches to start the top of the sixth here and six straight balls. There is some activity in the Hayes bullpen, but yeah, yeah no we, way. We, we see a hat. See. <laughs> the dugout blocks our view. We there, see the hat. And there's a hat, and unless I was seven foot tall, I probably would be able to make a number out. But yeah. Scoring update. Texas Rangers lead the Houston Astros eight to one in the bottom of the fourth. Ooh. At Minute Maid Park. Ooh. Ramirez will stay out there as Oscar Salazar will make his way back to the plate. He is in a 2-0 count. Landon Miller on deck. He shows bunt and lays off for a strike. On a pitch that looked outside. Somewhat suspect, but yeah, called a strike nonetheless, so but his his strike zone is kind of varied over the night for both teams. And Salazar hits this one deep, deep to the center. center. And Boom. it's to the fence. And that will see Tyler Espinosa round third and head for home. And that'll be an RBI double for Oscar Salazar. And just like I said, lots of power, lots of pop. One of the strongest hitters on the season for the Raiders as he hits a nuke to left center. And, and really, I don't even call that a one hopper as it hit it looked the like base it had a of chance, the fence. A chance to be out of there. Then Dawson Snow makes his way back in to run for Oscar Salazar. Is the How big was that walk? Yes. And, again, having the speed that was needed to be able to score all the way from first. Snow extends his lead, and Miller will stab at this on a bunch and hit it foul for strike one. And I get it why Coach will call a bunt in this situation with Landon Miller. He has because the wheels. He has, he has yes. the wheels, but, I mean, he has power, right? But he has the speed to get down the line. And Catron already crashing. Well, and also in recognition of that, the wheels, you do, or I'm sorry, not the wheels, the power that Landon possesses, your third baseman's not playing shallow. He's not expecting a bunt to be laid down there. Colin Lee at third. Catron at first. And again, Miller shows bunt. He bunts it up the middle, and he gets down the line. The throw to first in time as it's covered by Fernandez. A fielder saw or sack bunt. But it works perfectly as we now have our third run and second of this inning, only 90 feet away. And that'll bring up Nathan Miller. Nathan Miller's due. Miller's 0 for 2. He is struck out looking and grounded the second. Nathan Miller is due, and, and I'll tell you right now. And he will take for a ball on the outside. Nathan Miller is a great hitter. And a timely hitter. He's shown that earlier in the season and has not had a very hot bat as of late. Gavin Silva on deck. Swing and a miss on a very low fastball. And as you hear the folks say, <laughs> see ball, hit ball. One and one, the count to Miller. That pitch misses inside for ball two. Now 
And the 2 1. This is popped up and hit out towards shallow center. And that's going to oh, go. Oh, it's a And Dawson. Let's go. Let's go. And a fluke. CNI single. I'll tell you. In very, in very similar fashion to what happened against the Raiders' defense with Esquivel hitting that shot to center shallow that Probably gonna felt bring right between a, everybody. A pinch runner on for Nathan Miller. Let's see who they're going to send. And that looks Ryland like Payne. Ryland Payne. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan cheering for the <laughs> the oops dropped ball yeah, that was not played by an anybody. Error. No, you know? not at yeah. all. I mean, again, that's one of those that the outfield or sorry, well, the infielders are running. Reminiscent to what and, happened around us exactly. uh, in the in the previous inning, right? Exactly. The out, your center fielder Villa Lobos is running as fast as he can to come in. And Silva will take a pitch that looks like, like a strike. strike. <laughs> I'll tell like you, this strike to his, his strike zone is just, uh, it's hard to gauge. It moves. I think he's that pitch, see, now that was a ball. I guess that could be a makeup call, as he called that a strike. I know what the problem is. What's he, that? He's listening to the Rangers-Astros game in his ear. We, oh. can't, we can't tell. He's probably got an earpiece in there. And Silva will foul this one away as... Yeah, hit and run was called. He's getting caught up in the the Texas boot series. Now, how big is that sack bunt that Miller laid down a while ago, Jonathan? Yes, sir. It's all about small ball. That pitch misses high. And we have, too. we have been hurt by small ball as much as we have hurt folks by small ball. And it is not dead in the game, folks. It is much, very much alive. That's what Augie Garrido was famous for. I mean, that's... Pitch outside. And it looks like Ramirez is going away. I'll tell you what, in the day and age of power pitching and... Folks hitting the long ball, it, it's so, somewhat been lost. Uh, but you, you have teams that understand it and how effective it can be. Why get away from it? The payoff pitch outside for ball four. And another close pitch that was not called in the favor of the Hawks. And well, I mean, he's... It's right. It's he hasn't called strikes that were strikes, and he's called balls strikes that were balls, and it's it's just hard finding that zone, right? So he seemed consistent at the first, but as the game has gone along, it's it seems his his zone has changed, and this may be it for Ramirez. Coach Howard and calls time and will make his way four, out, which looks to be James Hansel. Uh, I saw walking that way He's towards the end of the dugout. And, yes, he is making his way out. So, number four, James Hansel. And he did take the ball. So, that's going to be it for Mark Ramirez. But, you know, he's he's done a great job oh. pitching, much like Very Colin Lee did on Tuesday night. You know, the guys go out there and, and they do their job. And batters, either they – find an answer or they don't you know and Raiders have had their struggles and we go back to the series versus Liberty Hill where they could not find an answer for Blaze Milo correct correct and 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 we saw that last year here against Colin Lee not right, finding yeah. an, answer an answer for, for him, him. And, and that definitely started out that way as well at, for us with Gavin Silva on Wednesday night and we now see a quick little update. Mark Ramirez does lead the game here, having pitched five and a third, allowing four hits. Three runs were scored. All three were earned. He only had one strikeout yeah, only in one. this game and four Fly walks ball, allowed. Ball. So, he, again, you can be effective without getting the strikeouts. We've seen that time and time again. Can you induce a ground ball? Can you get them to hit weak fly balls? And he's done that. We've had a lot of strong hits in the game from the Raider bats, but they've been right at guys. Right, yeah. You know, absolutely. so that works just, it's just as effective. 
and that actually gets in the head of the game. Uh, the pitcher is Hansel, James Hansel, H A N D S E L, Hansel, number four. So the Hawks now have their reliever coming in, another right handed pitcher. Oh, and look, we have another scoring update. Houston scratching back, top of the fifth, and it's eight to three. Texas. Of course, I grew up a Texas Ranger fan. I was born in Arlington, home of the Texas Rangers. So, I was born in Fort Worth. Hey, how about that? Okay, but my family is from El Campo, which is literally in the shadows of Houston. The Ricebergs. (laughs) Yes, sir. So we have played El Campo. We have, and that was actually... uh, the year we their, state. their coach right. called us out, called Crimpine out, and said, hey, man, play us. Y'all aren't nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we actually run-ruled with uh, our backups in, in that game. So I know Caden, my boy, talks about that frequently. Andrew Sanchez at the plate. He has walked and lined out. He's 0 for 1. Hansel from the stretch, and he deals. An off-speed changeup in for a strike. And I'll tell you what, Jonathan, the, the fall off on speed between him and Ramirez, of course, I hadn't seen a good fastball out of him yet, but his changeup really dropped off. Well, yeah, he saw, saw that in the warm-ups. And he pops this one up. It's an infield fly rule. <laughs> And Hansel was really quick to get in the game and want to be a defender there. And and as is the saying, as a pitcher, get out of the way. All right. Let your fielders play the ball. And he ducked out of the way as Cullen Lee called him off. Jacob Solis will make his way to the plate. He's 0 for 2. He has hit into an infield fly and flown out to left. But he was one of the heroes of Tuesday night's games as he drove in the tying run to get things started in the fifth inning. He will take for a ball. Xander Forsell on deck. We'll see if he remembers to take off his shin shin guard this time. (laughs) (laughs) And so they set this one foul and it... Goes foul down the line, the third base side for strike one. And sorry, folks, not as close as I made it sound. It was it was foul by a ways. Yeah, it was foul by a ways. Off the bat, I was like, oh, stay fair, because that was a beautiful shot that would have been over infield and would have actually ran to a corner. As we see a Hawks player having to run all the way to the corner to get that. And he hits this one. In the hole. In the hole. What a play by Jan. Yes, Ryan Cunningham gets by Guerrero. Throw home. He cut out the two-run score. What a back and forth we had there between defensive players and the runners that never seemed to stop. That was a play that started with a great hit by Jacob Solis, a dive. By your shortstop, Cooper Jen, that's able to catch the ball. He looks to go to first, is not able to make the play, but then turns around and decides to throw home to try to get the runner, but the run definitely gets in prior to the throw, which then... <laughs> he'll get he'll get the single and pick up two RBIs along the way. Wow. And a... Wow, what a, a, a lot of back and forth on that one. Coach definitely pushing some buttons over oh, no, there. I don't think his, right, his right arm wasn't stopping. Yeah. Michael, his right arm was in a windmill fashion as he was just sending them. Pitch down and away for ball one to Xander Forsell. Ryland, I mean, Rainer Parker. Rainer Parker. Where, where, where am I going? Rainer Heinrich. <laughs> Man, that's almost as bad as Henry. That's a hit back shot. up the middle. And Solis will round home. Great third and for home. And the heaven not cut that ball off. 
they had an actual great opportunity to get Jacob Saliz at home, but it was cut by Catrone, holding Catrone, who was not told to not cut it by the catcher. So in comes Jacob Saliz for another run in the inning. And Xander Forcell with an RBI. Hey, he did it again. He called him Heinrich. Rainer Hendrich. Hendrich. <laughs> It's Ray Nar. Ray Nar Henrich. Ray Nar Henrich. <laughs> Nar Nar Henrich. Rainer Heinrich is 0 for 3 on the night. Is it Steve Henrich, too? It'll be Steph Henrich. Steph? If you're going to get it wrong. Oh, know. yeah, for sure. Rainer will call time and step back out. Yeah, a lot of banter back and forth as the home plate umpire is is motioning to the Raider bench and dugout to have them back up and get back in the dugout. That pitch will go to the backstop, and Diego Gayton, who's courtesy running for the catcher, will get, head down to second on the wild pitch. That's ball one to Narnar Henrich. Yeah, but that inning did see two runners scoring from second for the Raiders with very quick, close plays at home. Tyler Espinosa on deck. The 1-0, that's in for a strike. James Hansel really relying a lot on that breaking pitch and off speed. Yeah, it's it's worked for him. Swing and a miss. As it did there. On that breaking pitch for strike two. And Heinrich in a one-two count. One on with two outs. And the pitch from Hansel. That's outside for ball two, and that'll even things up. Deuce is wild for Rainer. Oh, wow. And a steal by Diego Gayton on a ball three. Yeah, Diego had an extremely big jump on that and could have walked to third as Hansel didn't even recognize the fact that he was moving and then threw behind the head of Rainer Heinrich. The payoff pitch. That is hit back up the middle. That'll be played by Fernandez. The throw to first, not being time, and that will score. That'll be that was a bang bang play, Jonathan. I'm hesitant to give that an error, even though it was a bad throw. I don't. I think he I had, had beat I out. I had him beat. I had him beating that throw out. I was actually watching Rainer up the line, and he was there easily a half step before the ball got to Catrone, and in in the turf there and not able to handle that off the hop. Which gives him another RBI. Raiders take a 7 nothing lead here in the top of the sixth. And this is a bunt laid down by Espinosa that just goes foul. <laughs> had and we the had Raiders dirt, have, batted, have batted around. Had, if we'd have had dirt there, I think that would have had a chance to get bumped back in field into play as it was dancing on the foul line all the way down and Cullen Lee doing the smart thing and waiting for it to float foul and picking it up immediately. And Espinosa, this is his second at bat of the inning. Oscar Salazar on deck. And he did get on and scored in this inning for the first run of the inning. That pitch gets oh, the outside yeah. corner, a fastball for great, strike two. Great pitch. Great pitch. A lot of late movement in that one. Hansel back to the stretch. Rainer extends his lead, and he takes off for a second. Drop third strike. We'll throw down to first. We'll be in time. And it'll go K-2-3 on the put out of Espinosa. The Raiders get six runs on one, two, three, four, five hits, and they leave one. 
Yeah, and I think there's definitely been a little banter from the... After five and a half, it's Rouse seven. Hayes, nothing. And Oscar Salazar makes his way out to the mound to pitch the sixth. Yeah, and, and again, knowing that we had multiple pitchers warming up, which now we do again see two more. I see Connor Thompson out there, and Trey Schluter again. Getting ready, and a quick update from the softball game between Rouse and Hayes. Uh, same school. Oh, no. We now have a run for Rouse, and they are still down now 2-1 to one versus 2-0, as they were earlier. So, and, and looks to be still in the sixth inning, as that game is moving a lot faster than ours as they started after we did. And not sure if that's the norm for softball. New up for the Hawks. Adriano Fernandez hold it Catron and Gio Escobel. Yeah, and Fernandez a very dangerous hitter here for the Hawks. And First pitch in for a strike to Fernandez. As if I'm not mistaken, he accounted for the run, the RBI, in Wednesday night's game for the Hawks. That gets to the backstop as it sails over for sales glove. <laughs> that was the uh, double leg kick from Osal there. As the... Pitch gets away from him. 1-1, one, one, a swing and a miss for strike two. And So last week's game, my wife came to watch the, the 500 did. career win, that, that game versus Lockhart, and she got to meet Oscar. Oscar's, and she did. She Oscar's said she her had favorite never, player. Yeah, she's like, this I've is hit out to left, him. and Graves over and will make the catch. And that will do it for Fernandez. I do remember her saying, I want to go meet Oscar. I love Oscar. Yeah. I've never had an opportunity City to, to meet, meet him. And uh, yeah, so and she did get to sit down there and talk with him for a little while as well. All right. Yeah, she sure did. And, you know, he's such a good kid. You know, a lot of kids might blow somebody off and, you know, hey, yeah, thank you very much. But no, he took some time to talk with her. And, it, you know, it, it meant a lot to her and to myself with uh yeah, it's always always great to see that. And I even remember going to pick up my daughter, who's a freshman now at high school, and I saw Oscar on my way, and he goes, hey, Mr. Casper, what are you doing here? <laughs> that pitch misses low for ball one. He gave me and a big hug. You, know, and you see these kids year after year, and every, when I show up to sit, set up the gear and everything, everybody's, hey, Mr. Francis, Landon Miller is usually the first one to say it. This is hit out to right, and – Espinosa underneath it will make the catch, and that will do it for Catron. But he's the first one that always greets me, and he'll always look at me, and he'll go, it's baseball time in Texas. And so when, you, when the kids are doing that, and they come up, and they thank you for broadcasting their games. Yes. You know, they thank you for what you're doing. And this is volunteer for us. We don't get paid for this. Correct. Uh, we're just a couple of baseball dads that uh, love the game love and the game. like love being connected to our high school. Very much so. And and you obviously a lot longer than myself. Swung on and hit out to left. Graves will take about 10 steps back, make the catch, and they go in order in the six. And another very fast, very quick, very minimal pitch inning is what was that, five? Five well, or six pitches? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine oh, pitches. I was a little off. But still, nine well, but pitch you look inning, at game that's changer. great. What's his count in game change? The total count for Oscar at this point now is 89 pitches, 57 for strikes. Wow. 
and this will not give me a per inning. I mean, I, I, could, go, down, yeah. I could go into the plays and count to see what they have, but I, I'm, I'm not going that route. Do up for the Raiders in the seventh. Salazar, Miller, and Miller. But we've already seen two innings here from Hansel, and we did see Ramirez with 82 pitches. No, we've got a new 45. pitcher, number 12. Okay, and that's going to be... Went, Hansel only went one inning. That's going to be McInvale. Well, actually, he went two-thirds of an inning. Did uh, Hansel? Oh yeah, he did. You're right. And this is McAvell. I what's remember his first name. Uh, this was Tyler, I believe. Yeah, Tyler McAvell. M C I N V A L E McAvell. Tyler McAvell. Uh, we did get to see him in Wednesday night's game. Uh, but yeah, uh, James Hansel does go two thirds of an inning, allowing three hits. Two runs, one strikeout, no walks, two earned. So, you know, each of them only recording one strikeout. So they're, again, pitching to contact, which has been very effective up until the point of a of a six-run six inning. But from the bats of the Rouse Raiders, and they have still – been able to get and induce a lot of ground outs as well as fly outs and a lot to be said for pitching for contact as is the case tonight and okay. Oscar Salazar will come to the plate ah and just trying to get Winking quick and a easy, miss. swinging a miss there on a pitch that was both low and away. And He's two for three on the night with a single, an RBI double, and a ground out to second. That pitch down and away for ball one. Which, again, was the same pitch he swung at the first time. He's like, why did you swing at that? You could see him shaking his head, talking to himself. Landon Miller, that pitch outside for ball two on deck. So we have the real law firm of Salazar, Miller, and Miller. All right, there you go. The 2-1, that's outside for ball three. And the wind is... Uh, well, tough. I mean, it's, yeah, it's we've, still we've got blocked off. Swing and uh, a miss on a little high cheese. Yeah, he and tried to lay Salazar off. Salazar chases it. And... <laughs> the payoff pitch. That's down and away for ball four. And that should see Dawson Snow as he immediately... Gives his hat to one of the other players and makes his way to first base in relief of Oscar. Now I'll bring up Landon Miller. Landon Miller with a sack bunt, sack bunt, and I that, would uh, that moved uh, snow over in yeah. the last. Inning. And with it being seven to zero now, I would think he's going to get a swing away sign here from Coach. We'll see. This is outside football. And did not look to square up for the bunt there. So, again, I would think that he would have a swing away opportunity here. Try to unleash some of that power and send the ball. And he'll hit this down down third baseline. It just goes foul. And the count goes one and one. You never go wrong by being in a ballpark. You know, you no just gotta love it. The atmosphere that baseball brings and the excitement that softball's got going on next door. Oh, yeah. And there's always a lot of chance and a lot of banter going on in the softball game. 1-1. One, one, this is Gosh. hit out to shallow center. And Villalobos will make the catch. Yeah, not letting 
that ball have any opportunity to drop as he was on that and actually had to field that well over his head because he got on it too quick. Nathan Miller will come to the plate. He is one for three. He is struck out looking, grounded out, and blooped the bloop. into center. An RBI bloop. Hey, but sometimes a bloop like that is, is all a, a hitter needs to see to become more active and start getting on a hitting streak. And Miller will hit this one to second. Fernandez has it to throw to first in time. Okay, so a hit and run called up by Coach Crimpine and did work effectively. Just unfortunately, Nathan not not finding a gap. What? Are you saying he's just not as fleet of foot? Oh, no, 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 no. It just wasn't a great hit to get in the gap. Well, it was great contact to be put in play so that he advanced the runner. He just didn't find a hole. And we'll infield. bring up Gavin Silva. Silva Low will take away. for ball. <laughs> Silva has walked twice and flown out to left. He's 0 for 1. And to answer that question, no, he is not fleet of foot. <laughs> if he would agree with me. Yeah. Andrew Sanchez on deck. One on with two outs. There it is. And a pitch yeah. down the middle for a strike. When the count goes two and one. Sorry, Gavin Silva's got a lot of sneaky power. I'd like to yeah. see him. Really turn on one here. He loves pulling the ball. 2-1. Think it gets oh. the outside corner for a strike. That looked good. Great pitch. Great pitch. Scoring update. 9-3 Texas. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this has popped up. It is playable. Catrone in foul territory will make the catch, and that will do it for the Raiders' seventh. All right. See the they get no runs on no hits. They lead one, and after six and a half, it's seven nothing. Rouse and the home field Hayes Hawks down to their last three outs to make something happen here. Do up for the Hawks in the seventh. Cullen Lee, great kid, and Alex Villalobos. And this is district game number 10 with yep. only two more series and after have that. Four more district games and two non-district games. Unbelievable. So six flying. games left in the regular season, Jonathan. I was thinking about that today. So crazy. Oscar Salazar back on to pitch the seventh. You do have some pitchers heading out, too. Looks like Trey Schluter heading out to the bullpen. Look to see if I could get. I think we have Leander is going against Layman, if I'm not mistaken. Is that also who's going this week? Yeah, we didn't go over scores. You can go we over did. scores. I was, gonna I was just thinking about that. So. Scores from Wednesday night's game, as I believe mostly everybody was uh, was rained out. Uh, we did see, obviously, Rouse beating Hayes 6-1. Cedar Park 7-0 over Glenn. Leander 5-1 over Layman. And 3-0 over Lockhart. And an extremely First loud pitch, Cullen Lee. cheer. This is high for a ball which I believe was probably an out over here in the softball game as we now have Rouse taking the field in the top of the sixth. 1-0, a fastball down the middle. For oh, I'm strike. sorry, bottom of the sixth. <laughs> one and one to Cullen Lee. A little change up, misses low for ball two. Looks like he may run Oscar up against his pitch count with him coming out again here in the seventh. Fastball cut on and missed for strike two and then leaving it up. Great and kid on deck. Which 
means that Oscar does have 20 pitches to work with here in the seventh. Check swing. No, he didn't go around. They asked. <laughs> they Xander motioned to the line umpire, field umpire, to ask him, did he go around? And he's just out there in, in La La Land. And then the home plate umpire says, hey, did he go? Oh, oh, yeah, no, he didn't go. <laughs> Payoff pitch. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Uh, and that will bring up Graydon Kidd. Kidd is 0 for 2. He has flown out to left and struck out. Look. Yeah, the, the field umpire's there, hands in his pocket, like just in, he's just in a leisure evening watching the game on TV. That was the eighth strikeout on the night for Salazar. Villalobos on deck. That pitch in for a strike. Oscar Salazar showing zero signs of fatigue as he is going strong here. Probably pumping that one in at, at a 90 to 91 mile an hour fastball. The 0-1, that misses inside. Had Forcell set up more inside, that would have been a strike. But because he had to reach over so far, yes. he didn't get the call. And, and again, even seeing Graydon Kidd duck away. Because he's called that inside pitch out. on yes. Graydon every time. Yes. Okay. One, one. This is fouled back and out of play. That will go one and two. One, two, this is fouled out of play. Now a uh, three-one game. Hayes Hawks over the Rouse Raiders softball game. Again, bottom of the sixth. Kid will stand back in. One-two pitch, swing and a miss for strike three. And now three strikes away. Down to their final out. Maybe not. It may be. It could be one swing of the bat and a fly ball out or ground ball out. But, yes, they have three strikes remaining. One out away. One out. So it could come in a combination of many. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Hey, hey, there's strike one. He's done a good, great job of getting out ahead tonight. The 0 1, a breaking ball misses inside for a ball. The 1 1 pitch, fastball. Cut on a miss, and Hawks down to their final out. Texas taking a 10 3 lead over Houston. Just jabbing at my buddy here, James. <laughs> Mr. Disaster. Oh! Fouled off Fouled the off foot. Fouled off and hit the shin guard. Shin foot. Xander's like, I'm good, Blue. Just let's go. Let's do this thing. <laughs> God, look at that. Xander on his knees is almost as tall as that home plate umpire is. All right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Xander's One a and tall two kid, though. So. To Villalobos. Looking for a low and away pitch. Fastball fouled away. I'll tell you what, Xander's probably doing a play out of Major League Two. The heck with the signs. Bring me the heat, right, Ricky. Yeah. Just throw the fastball here as they have not been able to catch up to it. Breaking ball swung on and missed, and Xander himself will apply the tag. And that will do it K-2-3 as he strikes out the side. 
or K2 as he strikes out the side, and the Raiders sweep Hayes this year to return the favor that was done to Flip us last the year. Script. Right? Flip the yes. script. And we, that gets to see a complete game one hitter from the right hand, the right arm of Oscar Salazar, and everybody just peeking and in form, and we're getting the hits and the offense from very unlikely situations and unlikely players. So. I want to go through our, our sponsors and thank our Grand Slam sponsors. Pulley offers Texas construction teams a new take on building permitting as your expediter, Ashley Knight, ensures accurate permit requirements, fewer rounds of comments, and few, full visibility at every step so you can break ground sooner. Faster permits in Texas starting today. Energy for Purpose. We perform energy audits for a purpose, stewarding energy use to impact the most vulnerable. And our walk-off level sponsor, Jonathan, GPS Legends Baseball. With over 50 years professional playing experience on staff, we help young men find their direction on and off the field. It's bigger than baseball. Thank you, fine sponsors, for your sponsorship of Rouse Raider Baseball. We cannot do it without your support. It is greatly appreciated. Jonathan, if you want to run down the final numbers. Yeah, so uh, we do have the final tonight, 7-0. to Rouse Raiders taking down the Hawks. And as Michael mentioned, returning the flavor from last year and winning, sweeping Hayes as they did sweep. The Raiders, even though the Raiders made a good deep run, this was that sort of kink in the armor of last year as Liberty Hill was this year for this season. And we do have the final again, 7-0, Oscar Salazar, as I mentioned, on a complete game, one hitter with 10 strikeouts and three walks, allowing just a few base runners and I believe only one guy making it to third base. They're early in the game. The Rouse hitters coming in, we had 27 at batters, allowing seven hits, five walks, and only two strikeouts against. Uh, so, again, well, the, the Hawks really- only had four base runners. Okay. On the night, and yeah. only one made it to third. Right, yeah. only the one at third. Two and... stranded at second, one stranded at third, and one stranded at first. So, uh, you know. Yeah, so defensively very strong. Again, pitch to contact. Let the defense work behind you. We've seen some great plays tonight on both sides. We've seen yeah. some very hard-hit balls tonight right. on both sides. And all the hard-hit balls really were right at guys, you know, and uh, for, for the Hawks. and not able to take advantage of that and not able to really put together any consecutive hits with them only allowing the one hit and the runners with the three walks getting on. Those are the guys that advanced. Well, tip of the cap to Mark Ramirez. I mean, he came in and pitched some great baseball until he just faded away. But up until that point, Man, he would. He went three straight innings, three up, three down. He did on and, the Raiders, and uh, you know there was definitely some equal opportunity offending going on by the home plate umpire tonight. Right, yeah, yeah, he was as he had some pitches that questionable were calls both, both ways, ways, both ways. There's no way that he really swayed one way or the other. I mean, both sides were affected by that, and both sides were very adamant about it happening, you know, from the fans to the players. You've got to see Ramirez not happy about some calls as well as Oscar Salazar. So, you know, that's a part of the game. You know, it happens very few times are we going to have an opportunity to have a great called game, right, yeah. <laughs> you know, at this level. So you just got to take it with what you will, brush it off, get on, get past it, and just execute. So be with us tomorrow uh, as we travel to Lake Belton. That's a 12:30 game start. Uh, evidently, they have prom going oh, okay. on, so, so it's not they, a yeah, they split the difference. So, coach okay. was pushing for one, but uh, they compromised and went to twelve thirty because we got to travel, right? So, okay. uh, we will be on the air. I'll get that set up uh, shortly uh, before we break down, and uh, so yeah, so it should be on by twelve fifteen ish, right around in there, and and this will be even though this is not a district game. This will still be called and and lined up and set up just as any regular game. And Lake Belton, 
is, and we'll have to see where they, were they thir- fall. They were 13th, 13th or 15th, right? They were 13th. Maybe it was uh, top 25. There, there we go. go. They are 15th. 15th. Yes, they they were 15th going into this week. So we'll have to see where they stand coming out of this week, as well as our Rouse Raiders, you know, and very likely week, could move up. Next week we have Glenn, and we will end the season, the regular season. As we Cedar always Park. do against Cedar Park. And, you know, we'll see how that unfolds. There's always uh, – some questionable <laughs> issues that uh, seem to always find their way into that game. You know, I'll just I'll leave it at that. So one more jab before we go, Jonathan. It's twelve three Texas in the bottom of the sixth. What's that? I don't even know what game you're talking. About. Uh-huh. I have yeah, no idea what game you're talking. Yeah, about. That's right, folks. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So for Jonathan Caspar, I'm Michael Francis. With a happy final tonight, seven nothing. And we thank you for tuning in and watching Rouse Raider Baseball here on SHN.